I'm Matt Lockwood, I'm the Net Zero Carbon Support Officer for Portsmouth Diocese. The aim of this video is to show you how to use the Energy Footprint tool, which you access through the Parish Buying website. The first step is to log into the online parish return system for your church, and then choose the option to enter data. This will take you to the summary screen. In this example, you can see two churches, as this account is linked to two churches. Perhaps I'm the treasurer for both churches and therefore fill in the survey data for both in the online parish return system. In this instance, I want to fill out EFT data for Chichester 7. You can see that the energy footprint tool has not been completed or submitted for Chichester 7 yet, while Chichester 8 is complete. I could enter survey data for Chichester 9, another church in my parish. But at this point, I only want to enter data for Chichester 7, so I will select this church. This takes me to the summary screen for this church, and I can see the diocese and the church name at the top. To enter my data into the Energy Footprint tool, click on the Enter Your Data button here. This takes me to the first data entry screen. This first screen is all about the buildings you have in your parish. In this parish, you select which buildings you want to enter data for and add any buildings that you previously hadn't reported on. The first question presents me with a list of churches that are in my parish. This table refers to church buildings. If you want to enter energy data for a church hall or other building, I will show you how to do that later. If you only have one church in your parish, then there will be only one church listed. On the left hand side of the table, you can select which of the church buildings in your parish you want to enter energy data for. On the right hand side of the table, you can select which type of church building it is. This question is a drop down menu. The only two options are church or church and church stroke parish hall combined, shared meter. I am going to enter data only for the Church to 7 church building. And I'm going to leave the church building type as church, as the building is solely a church building. Now we scroll down the table which shows the other church buildings you have in your parish. This is the table where you can record your church halls or parish halls or community centres or parish owned housing or any other non-church church building. If a church in your parish entered data for a church hall in the 2023 EFT, this building should be included in this table. In this instance, Chichester 8 has reported energy use for a church hall they have called Church House. Because they have already submitted survey data, I cannot edit this building. I can, however, add a building. At the bottom of the screen, you can also add a building to the other buildings list. When you add a building to the table, you are asked to give it a name and select a building type. In this instance, I am adding a parish owned house, which the curate currently lives in. So I will call it curate's house and select parish owned housing. I'm going to add a church hall, calling it church house. And I'm going to add another building called Cheshire to 8 church hall, also a church hall building type. Once again, on the left hand side, I can select whether I want to report energy use for this building. The name field is editable and I can use it to record the name of the building. The building type is also editable. Through this, you can indicate what type of other building this building is. The options are church hall stroke parish hall, parish owned housing and other. On reflection, I have realized that I added the church house building in error as Chichester 8 has already reported on this building, so I'm going to remove it. When you select the remove, you are presented with reasons why you're removing the building from the list. In this case, I am selecting that the building appears more than once on the list. I am also going to rename the other church hall to be Community Centre, as we use it as office space and run a food pantry out of it, as well as using it as a church hall. I'm changing the building type to other. And now I am ready to select which buildings I'm going to enter data for. Chichester 7 Church, 
Community Centre and Curate House. I select these and press Save and Start Returns. The left hand side of the screen shows me where I'm up to in the survey and which building I'm entering data for. In this instance, the first set of questions refers to Chichester Seven Church. I am firstly asked how often the building is used for regular events. This question is intended to measure how busy a building is. This church is used for Sunday services, messy church on Saturdays, and a midweek service, so I will select two to four days a week. Next, I am asked how old the boiler is at Chichester Seven Church. We got a new boiler a couple of years ago. Finally, I am asked what sources of energy and technologies this church building uses. It uses electricity and mains gas. Then I select next. As you can see from the left hand side of the screen, I am still answering questions about Chichester Seven Church building. For my church, the main source of heating is a gas boiler. So I select mains gas. These questions then relate to my electricity supply because on the first screen I selected that the church uses both electricity and gas. The list of suppliers you see here, and also when we look down here for gas suppliers, are those suppliers and tariffs that have been determined to be genuinely a green tariff for the purposes of calculating your carbon footprint in the EFT. If you are with one of these suppliers, the Energy Footprint tool will reduce your carbon emissions from these energy sources. In my church, the electricity supply is a green tariff supplied by Ecotricity. If your supplier is not listed here, you would click Other and then enter the name of your supplier. You are then asked to enter how much electricity your church has purchased in the year 2024. For this, you will need your electricity bills. It asks for the electricity purchase as a total of kilowatt hours and the total cost. If you know both, that's great. Please fill in both fields. If you are able to provide the electricity usage in terms of units purchased in kilowatt hours, that is more accurate than just providing the cost of electricity, so that is preferred. My church used 13,155 units of electricity. You have to enter a whole number in this field, do not include any decimal points. And that cost them £4,286. The next question you're asked is if you are on a single or three phase electricity supply. You may or may not know that for your church. If you don't know, then please don't guess and select unsure. There are some handy hints in the help button here on how to determine if you are on a single or three phase electrical supply. In my example, I know that we're on single phase, so I select this. The reason we're asking for this information is that changing to a wholly electrical heating solution increases the energy demand of your church and might require an upgrade to the electrical supply. This is not needed in all cases, but capturing this information about all our churches can help us understand where we might need a more strategic solution for this, or to consider providing grant support in the future. I am then asked when the building's current electricity tariff expires. We've included this one-off question to inform a project we're launching in 2025, encouraging churches to switch to an accredited green supplier my electricity tariff is expiring before the 30th of June 2025. We then move on to our gas usage. The first question is about your gas supply and tariff, in a similar way to the question about the electricity supply and tariff above. My church is on a green tariff with green energy. This church purchased 77,251 kilowatts of gas and that cost them £7,592, substantially more than the electricity. You will also notice that I am asked to specify a unit of gas purchased. It is very important to answer this question if you enter the annual amount of gas purchased. This question is mandatory. For this building I am entering a kilowatt per hour figure. The notes box is available for you to note any relevant information about your building's energy use. For example, you may have had to close your building for the first half of the year, so your energy use is substantially different compared to last year. If I'm happy with all my answers to the questions, I will press next. As you can see from the left hand side of the page and also the top, I am now being asked questions about the community centre. Because I selected my building type as other, I am being asked to specify what kind of building it is. I'm going to write community centre and office space. Next, I am asked who owns the building. 
This is to help determine whether I need to report energy use data for the building. If your church or an entity connected to your church does not own the building, then it is not currently considered part of the Church of England's energy footprint. In this case, a charitable board of trustees owns the building, but this trust is made up of members of the PCC and the vicar. So I will select a trust that is governed by your church slash parish slash benefice. I am then asked about who uses the building. If all of the building is leased out to an external entity to the church on a long-term lease, then it is not considered part of the Church of England's carbon footprint. In this instance, part of the building is leased long-term to a food pantry, but the rest of the building is used by the parish. So I select, we use it and have a long lease to other organisations. From there, I am asked the same questions as I was asked about the church building. In this instance, the community centre uses electricity and solar power. And electricity is its primary source of energy for heating the building. Now I get to the solar power questions. In this example, I'm imagining that the solar panels were installed before I joined this church, and so I don't know the installed capacity. If you do know it, please include it here. I do know how much electricity the solar panels generated this year. That was 1500 kilowatts. I then click next to move to entering survey data for parish owned housing, which I have called the curate's house. As with the community centre, I am asked firstly who owns the curate's house. In this instance, the church owns the curate's house. Just to note here that it is important not to include diocesan owned housing in this section. We collect data about diocesan owned housing from a different source. This survey is only for recording information about housing that is owned in some way by your church, parish or benefice. Next, I am asked who lives in the house. In this instance, our curate lives in the house and they do not pay the church for any rent for living in it. The housing is part of their stipend, essentially. If the curate did pay rent for living in the parish-owned housing, then the house would not be in the scope of the church's carbon footprint and you would not have to report on it. It is a bit confusing, but these survey questions can guide you. We also have the building checker tool, which can help you work through whether your building is in scope before you even start the survey. Anyway, the curate's house is in scope for carbon footprinting. Because it is a house, I am not asked questions about energy use, and I'm instead asked for the postcode and street address of this house, and that's it. Now the survey is over, but I'm not quite finished. You can see here that this EFT is now 100% complete, but it hasn't yet been submitted, and this is also highlighted in the message at the top. I'm happy with my answers, so I'm going to click Submit. It will confirm that I want to submit and I click OK. If after I've submitted my EFT I realise I've made a mistake, for example I was looking at the bills for the wrong year or the bills for the wrong building, I can easily come back to the EFT and can unsubmit the data which will allow me to go back through and update and make any changes to any of those fields we've entered. This screen explains why we were collecting the energy footprint tool information and then you can scroll down and you can see for all the information you've entered this year. This section shows me the total carbon footprint for the parish for this year, based on the information I have entered. It will only include data for buildings reported and does not include the carbon emissions from parish owned housing. It will also show me the comparison to last year if an EFT was completed, although you can see there was no 2023 data for my test church, so this is showing as blank. The pie chart helps to visualise where the majority of your parish's carbon emissions are being generated. For this church, the majority of our carbon emissions comes from our gas usage. So that starts to tell me that if I want to move to a low carbon solution, I should start by looking at our gas heating system. If you scroll down, you can see a graph which shows how your carbon emissions from energy use for your parish have changed over time. This graph will only show data from the years you have submitted data. For my example, we can see that in 2020, the electricity and gas usage was lower than this year, which meant our overall total emissions were lower. The yellow line shows us our total carbon emissions from our energy usage and how this has changed over time. The red line shows emissions from electricity and the blue line showing emissions just from gas. The final chart shows emissions by building so you can see which of your buildings is the highest emitter and also what the breakdown of their carbon emissions are by energy type. If we scroll back up this page, you can view 
reports for individual buildings which show overall emissions and trends over time per building. But let's scroll back down. Once we go past these charts, we give you some suggestions about interpreting the carbon footprint. One point to make here is not to get too hung up on small fluctuations from year to year, and especially if you've had any changes in patterns of use over that year. For example, was your building closed for renovation or had your heating system failed in a given year? If it has been a period of extremely cold weather this year, you'd see your energy usage go up. Equivalently, if it has been a mild year, you'll see your energy usage go down. What you really want to look at is those long-term trends to understand how you are progressing on your journey to net zero carbon. If you scroll down a bit further, we'll give you suggestions on initial points you should think about in driving down your carbon emissions. And then further down, sources of more information which you can click through to. Lastly, if you scroll down a bit further, you can see a summary of all of the information you entered in the EFT today. On completion of the EFT, we are encouraging parishes to print off a report to take to your annual parish council meeting for discussion and to consider your first or next steps in your net zero carbon journey. To do this, you can click on print and download the report. You will first see this pop-up window which explains how to save the report as a PDF. You would click on the open print dialog and then go through the process and save it as a PDF. This will look slightly different dependent on your own computer and operating system, so I won't walk through this here and will cancel instead. One last thing to say is you can now see here that your energy footprint tool is 100% completed and submitted. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please do contact your Net Zero Carbon support team in your diocese.